It's not wide enough. So I'm out on the Pacific coast. Had an opportunity to take a couple days and head out here. I'm actually not too far from where I grew up here in San Diego, uh, in the southern part of California. I'm on the cliffs here. Just thought that I would take a little hike uh, down a little path not far from where I'm camped and would catch the, the sunset. Uh, we've had these kind of medium clouds most of the day. So there's a pretty good chance that we won't get much of anything, but there's, there's this little area, you can kind of see it, it's right here where it's been open all afternoon and we just had nothing but that just, you can see it, just that golden kind of light out there. And my hope is that the sun will come right on the horizon there because that's really, that's right about where it's supposed to set and that we'll get a bright sun lighting up the clouds and the, uh, the ocean. And if not, then, well, I'm just in a beautiful spot and that's okay. For those who are super interested in the technical details, uh, I am shooting right now uh, with my uh, 14 millimeter manual uh, prime and I am shooting at F11, F11. Uh, and I'll play around with some of my speeds. Is that a whale? That's a whale. Well, we will continue to watch whatever that is, but it looks like it could be a whale. That's a train. So anyway, so I'll be shooting at various, various shutter speeds. Just, we'll see what suits my fancy. Uh, I really just kind of shoot at ISO 100 with my histogram leading the way. I'll probably bracket a couple of exposures just to make sure I can cover things in case anything gets blown out or underexposed. Never, never hurts to take a couple extra shots at different exposures and then if you've got to blend them in later, you always can. And I've got kind of two different compositions in mind, but they will really be dependent on how much light we get. So. There are these, these bushes down here. Uh, and if the bushes get any kind of light from the sun, uh, I'll probably want to do a more of a square, slightly vertical, maybe four by five or um, one by one to get a lot of the bushes in the shot. If not, I've got these very interesting kind of I don't know, sound, sand, it's kind of cliff faces over here. I'm not really sure what they're called, but uh, really interesting areas over here that I think would just, they make good composition. They're just very interesting, but that's only gonna really work if we get that kind of flashy sun out of the distance. So I may be able to shoot both compositions, but I'm gonna prioritize the, the portrait composition really. Also, I'm here with a group of people and they are right behind me. Like they're right, they're probably within 50 yards of me. Uh, I'm up on a cliff kind of above them and they can see everything I'm doing. And it's really weird that they know that I'm just up here talking to my camera. Anyway, just personal thought there. There's chocolate on one of the I got about 10 minutes before sunset and just hoping for that sun to fall below those clouds. These clouds are actually moving pretty quickly and they are uh, starting to break up just a little bit, giving them a little more texture. They're not just a flat blanket, like it's actually, we're getting these kind of cotton balls and they're starting to get a little bit of color on the tops, which is, it's a good sign. So it's either gonna work out and look amazing or I don't know.
it is just nice to be out on the coast. Back near home. So I feel like the sun's about to come onto that cloud bank. So I'm gonna start getting some bracketed exposures of my mid ground and foreground uh, with the exposure up a little bit. Cause these, these dark lush green trees and bushes are gonna get a little crunchy uh, if I expose them the way I am now for this guy. And then I'll, I'll layer them in layer. The other reason to do a bracket exposure for this foreground and midground is that I have waves here. And right now I'm shooting at one sixth of a second. That's gonna really blur the waves out and I want them to actually be crisp. It's not a lot of wind and I'm on a pretty stable tripod. So shooting with a two second timer just to prevent any shake. Light is really starting to diminish and contract. But I haven't seen the sun yet. I know it hasn't gone under the horizon but my hope is waning that we will get that, that, you know, it was going to be a tight envelope regardless. There it is. <laughs> so not only is the sun coming through, but and there's a slight reflection, just this tiny reflection. Did you, did you get any of that? <laughs> well, that was pretty much exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> oh. I realized that I was not getting as much of the sunset in the shot as I wanted with the super wide lens. So I switched out of nowhere. I decided to switch to the, um, to the 70 to 200, uh, which totally changed my composition. I don't have any of these C stacks in here, but <laughs> yeah, my brain just said switch lenses. So I did, and I didn't miss the shot in the process. <laughs> so, all right. All right, so it's getting cold, it's getting dark. You've seen that, I haven't, hopefully it came out. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe, like, and Instagram is right there and down there. All right, see you in the next one. All right, so it's getting cold, it's getting dark. You've seen that, I haven't, hopefully it came out. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe, like, and Instagram is right there and down there. All right, see you in the next one.